The first question, guys, risks and responses. Please have a look here. The solution, and this happens a lot, this happens with RTC solutions, this happens with UNISA solutions. Where they're asking you for responses to the risks at the financial statement level, they normally just dump all of the responses and not actually go one for one, like what I did. I did one for one because it seemed obvious in terms of the required, but I'm showing you that you don't need to. If it's for something like seven marks, you can just put them all down. If it was 15 marks and there were 15 risks, then you might have to go one for one because you're going to have to repeat some of those responses. Okay, but there they are, straight out of 3.30. More senior staff, more supervision, increased professional skepticism, unpredictability in order procedures, and then you've got to make general changes to the nature, time, and extent of your order procedures. So how do you do that? Decrease materiality. Do more testing at your end, more test of details, um, increase the extent, so your sample sizes of substantive procedures, and then evaluate the accounting policies. This is one that comes out of ISA to 40 as a response to fraud. Okay, the risks, trading over the internet, so hacking, and then also the non-compliance with the Electronic Communications Act. We then discussed the fact that they had a computer information system, so all the other risks with that computer information system. Decentralized, easy foreign operations, easy complex efforts requirements, and then your going concern indicators. Okay, risks with regards to revenue. So there was some standard revenue, the ISA 240 there, and then, because they had such an increase, that was in the background information, there was a risk that they recorded fictitious. Because they have a performance incentive scheme, also in the background information, risk that they recorded fictitious. Okay, so those two guys you needed to find in background. Okay, local sales, inclusives of that, so classification. And then, guys, these are two risks that always appear when it comes to revenue because of IFRS 15, the requirements. So, guys, those just remember. There's a risk that they record it based on the incorrect treatments of the contract and then risk that they don't satisfy the performance obligations. Okay, then broken up into your different types of revenue. Your foreign is incorrectly translated and they're recording it all up front. For your dealerships, potentially the incorrect package. And then also recording it up front. And for your private sellers, recording up front also for private sellers and for your Mozambican, the real-time system could result in errors. Okay, lots of risks there. Three, substantive procedures for trade receivables. Guys, those general procedures you should all be comfortable with and you should all be getting those. Then analytical procedures. So there had to be lots of marks for analyticals because there isn't huge amounts of available marks for valuation on its own. So look there. That's why I always do extra analyticals. For the lines for credit losses, we discussed a lot of this because they had discussed that they use IFRS 19. You needed to break up your testing to test IFRS 19. So did they use the simplified approach? What were their characteristics to group the different debtors into for the matrix to determine the calculation? Then, testing the rates by looking at prior actual written off to the allowance raised in the, in the previous year. So you can see if they are reasonable in their estimating. Okay, and looking at their forward-looking information, 
what did they use there? Then I recalculate, so I've tested the components, then I recalculate. Is there any subsequent information to help me? And then these were just some easy marks looking at attorneys for recoverability. Gross, all I can do is go and trace it to invoices. Check the dates, check the amounts, make sure it's correct, and then re-perform some aging. Substantive procedures for the cash incentive. So once again, general procedures standard. You should get all of those. And then the detail. Was it authorized agreeing all the conditions? Then go and test the detail. What's the cash component? Testing the tech audit ratio and then get the calculation agreeing that the employees that are on there meet the criteria, go and recalculating their ratio once you've agreed their salaries to the payroll, and recalculating the cash portion then in total, so that actually should have been done first, and then the completeness check to make sure that all employees that meet the requirements have been included in that schedule. Okay, Companies Act, so you're going to get your mark for your formatting and then the issuing of shares to a director or related party and the liability that goes with being there and not voting against that decision. The financial assistance for the purchase of shares and the liability that goes with if you don't disagree to that decision. Consideration for shares is the board's responsibility, director's personal interest in contracts, and then all of your director's conduct. And the liability that goes with it. Okay. So guys, those are your mock exams done. If you have any questions, you're welcome to ask. It's really important that you're doing these mock exams, that you're doing any practice exams that you have available so that when you get into the exam, you have practiced your technique. You've seen how solutions are set out so that you know how to go about starting and setting out your solutions. Okay, I want to wish you guys all the best for your exams. I hope everything goes well. And I hope if you are meant to be writing ITC next year, you are. And if you are moving into another level at, of CTA, I hope you do so. All the best, guys.